Gotcha. Hey, how's it going everybody? It's the Game Economist, and today I'm going to be giving you an informative video to hopefully get you into the PvP scene and to help you get a lot more out of your Dark Souls experience. Let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is that all of the tryhard duels are held around soul level 125 or 120. So I wouldn't take my character past 125. If you've already done that, go make a new character. Since you're making a new character, let's talk about what the best starter class is. Now, there, it's not this simple, but I'm basically going to recommend the Knight Starter Class. And the reason why is because the Knight Starter Class only has seven points into luck. And luck is arguably the least useful stat in the game. It increases your item discovery. It scales with hollow infusions and it increases the rate that you apply bleed and poison. None of those things are terribly important, especially at high level PVP. Okay, so the knight, the knight class is pretty good. Uh, overall, the allocation of the points in that class give you, let's say, a lot of freedom uh, to, to build your character however you want. If you want a mage or a pyro, if you want to be a strength character or a dexterity character, it's a pretty good spread of stat allocation. Okay, so I can definitely recommend the knight. Next, let's talk about respecking your character. So let's say you put the points into your character incorrectly and you want to fix this. You would go to Rosaria and choose Reallocate Attributes and she lets you do this only five times. And that gets us to the next part of this video. I want to talk about the Rosaria Respect Glitch. So a while back, people discovered that you can respect your character as many times as you want. And From never removed this glitch. I'm glad they didn't, because if they did, it would really lower the replayability of this game. Uh, basically what you do is you go to Rosaria, choose Reallocate Attributes, build your character up the way you want to build it, apply the changes, right? And you'll at that point, you're still going to be in the Rosaria menu, right? The menu will be... Uh, on the upper left hand corner of your screen. Instead of leaving that menu, you're going to close the game down and you're going to open the game back up. What will have happened, your character will have changed, but you didn't spend a pale tongue and you didn't lose one of your uh, five respects with Rosaria. That is the Rosaria infinite respect glitch. There's plenty of videos out there on it already, but I'm just trying to raise awareness of it because I know there's new people who kind of probably need to be tapped on the shoulder and told about it rather than thinking to go look for it. Okay, so now you know that your character shouldn't go past soul level 125. You know it's probably a good idea to have a night starter class and you know how to go to Rosaria and change your builds as many times as you want. Let's talk a little bit about build strategy. For me, my build strategy always begins with picking the weapon that I want to be using, you know, uh, whether that be like a caster build or a strength build weapon, like a great hammer. I pick it out, I bring it up to plus nine or plus 10 if I have a slab. I infuse it to dark or faith or whatever it is I want, right? And then I head over to Rosaria. Let me give you a quick tip before we get started. If you're using a strength weapon like a great club, be sure to dual wield that sucker before you talk to Rosaria. Because one, once you're in the respec screen, you're going to have the little AR portion that it shows, you know, each point you put into it is going to show the scaling. Well, you get different scaling when you're two handing it because the two handing of a strength weapon includes the uh, strength modifier. There's like a 1.5 times damage modifier, I think. I, I can't remember. I think that's the right amount. If it's not the right amount, leave a comment in the uh, comment section and I'll update my pinned comment. Thank you. Now, for me, once I've started talking to Rosaria, what I do is I meet all the minimum requirements for the weapons that I brought, right? If I got Black Knight Shield, I know I'm going to need 18 Strength. I want to use the Filiar Nor Chime, I'm going to need 18 Faith, right? If I want to use the Dragon Head Shield, I'm going to need 11 Intelligence, right? So I meet all the minimum requirements, I meet the minimum requirement for the weapon that I'm using, and then I just kind of look at the AR for that weapon, and that gives me a feel, you know, of the base damage of this weapon. That's just, that's just me, right? I like to know what the weapon does without any points invested into it. And that's when I start feeding points into all of the attributes that the weapon scales with. So if I'm talking about a dark weapon, it's intelligence, faith, and then probably dexterity or strength. That depends on what you're using. Uh, but yeah, I start putting points into, uh, for example, if it's a dark weapon, 
I'll bring intelligence and faith up to 30 because that's usually uh, after 30, you usually don't get a lot of damage per point. So if you bring it up to 40, you're wasting 10 points. You don't want to do that. You just want to stop at 30. And we call that uh, we call that meeting like the soft cap or the hard cap, right? Uh, for it depends on like how many points you get afterwards. So if you're like if you get up to 30, and and every point you put in afterwards is just a tiny increase, you've met the soft cap. The hard cap is where it, it doesn't really matter if you put any more points into that attribute. Your weapon absolutely won't get any more damage. Okay, so 30 is the soft cap for dark infusions. So I right away I bring intelligence and faith up to 30 if I have like a dark club. And then after I've met that, I start putting points into strength. Uh, and really what you're trying to do is put the points into the correct attributes in such a way that you're increasing your AR the most. So you can put one point into strength and look at how many points you get into the AR for that weapon. Hopefully you're getting like plus fours and plus threes. Around the time you start getting plus twos, that's when you need to start getting pickier about how many points you're putting into your weapon. So once your weapon's getting like plus twos, it's time for you to start looking at your vigor, your vitality, and endurance. Now for me, as a rule, I generally just bring my uh, endurance up to 30. It'll be 35 after the prisoner chain adds five points to it, right? But for me, when I'm doing the actual allocation, 30 is generally just my go-to number. If you want to really, really optimize the build, what you can do is test how many uh, stamina points you need to get like a perfect number of swings out of your weapon. That's up to you. You could even try using uh, like a lower amount of stamina. And if I if I'm correct, I believe stamina affects your your lightning defense. So those are just things to think about. You can bring your stamina up to 40 if you know that you're going to be fighting somebody who likes to use lightning infusions. Uh, but but for me, 30 is fine. Uh, as for Vigor and Vitality, let me mention you don't want to take your Vigor past 48. It's not very efficient past 48 uh, at all. So uh, a lot of people like to take it up to 40. So what they'll actually do is bring Vigor up to 35, and the Prisoner Chain Ring will add another 5 points on, and that'll get you right up to 40. But for me, I actually like to go past 40 lately. So instead of having 40 Endurance, 40 Vigor, I've been dropping my endurance to about 30, and I've been bringing my vigor up to 43, which is 48 vigor after the prisoner chain has been applied. And then the rest of my points go into vitality unless I need a certain amount of poise and I'm using a heavy weapon, which is sometimes the case. So if you have a heavy weapon and you need like, let's say for example, 38 poise in order to poise through other great weapons, then you're gonna have to keep track of your vitality in order to uh, wear the weapon set that's the appropriate set for your build. <clears throat> in other words, you might have to pull additional points out of vigor in order to accomplish the correct vitality. Uh, you could also pull points out of endurance. I don't know how low I would personally be comfortable with going. I think 30 is fine with me. So yeah, you wanna make sure you have the vitality you need to meet the poise requirements. The next thing you can do, you can use a website called Souls Planner to optimize your armor. Souls Planner will basically let you build your character up exactly the way you have it in the real game. And then they have an option is is kind of hit tucked away. It's a link and it's a ar armor optimization link. You'll click on that and it'll tell you how to get the best absorption. It can also tell you how to get a certain uh, poise rating that you're looking for. <clears throat> get a poise rating that you're looking for, or if you're even capable of reaching that poise rating. You know what I mean? So optimizing your armor is an important thing in this game, especially for try-hard duels. Uh, getting the correct amount of poise is an important thing if you want to be able to trade into opponents consistently, right? And uh, yeah, that basically is the whole ritual of respecting character. That's how I do it. Uh, you know, I put in a little more effort when I'm being very serious about my build. Well, if I just want to enjoy, you know, like playing with a particular weapon or cosplaying, I don't worry about having perfect vitality, perfect vigor, right? I don't worry about that as much. Uh, but, but in your case, now you know all of the things that go through my head when I'm building my character. Let me go ahead and give you a few more advanced tips. So there is sometimes a situation where you can either add more damage to your weapon or bring your vigor up. And the question is, which one should you increase? 
Well, you really have to think about it. Let's say you can increase the damage of your weapon by like plus two, and you're using a straight sword. So every time you swing that straight sword, you're gonna get plus two. If you swing it eight times in a fight, that's like plus 16. Or you could increase your health by 16, and then your opponent has to apply that same damage to you. So you see there's kind of a balance between them. You have to decide what's better, the higher vigor or the higher damage. And a lot of it applies to what weapon are you using. Are you using a great hammer? Plus two damage doesn't matter. You're going to hit them like maybe four times if you're lucky. Uh, so having an extra plus two damage doesn't really matter. Bring your vigor up, okay? Uh, let's talk about another complicated issue, weapon buffs. So we call weapon buffs an active buff because it eventually ends. We call Tears of Denial a passive buff because it never ends. It breaks. It's a health gate. If somebody breaks it, it goes away. But there is no timer for it. So if you do Dark Moon Blade, Dark Moon Blades over, you know, in whatever set amount of time you're given. It's like a minute or something, right? And then your opponent can easily punish you if you try to put it back on your weapon. Okay, so Dark Moon Blade generally is never used in high tier duels. So when you see all those videos, blah blah blah, one shot build, Dark Moon Blade, one shot build, those are poo poo builds. Those are bad builds. I think there's some exceptions, maybe the washing pole, uh, maybe invasion builds, right? That, that might be a good excuse to use it. But if you're talking about real try hard duels, if you waste 60 points into faith, trying to get all that damage on the Dark Moon Blade, and your opponent just waits the buff out, or they dual charm you, I mean, you're losing all those points you put into faith. Now you just have whatever it is you have, like a heavy weapon or a sharp weapon, and whatever points you put into to, to strength and dexterity. So in general, avoid weapon buffs. They're not effective. Uh, when it comes to chaos and dark infusions, the reason we use dark is because not many shields are very good at blocking. Well, you have one shield in particular that's really good. The Cathedral Knight Shield has very good dark defense. Just bring a chaos infused version of your weapon. Uh, when we're talking about faith builds, you don't see a lot of faith builds anymore. And the reason for that is because you have a uh, shield called the Lothric Knight Shield. And if you're fighting somebody who uses the very popular Lothric Knight Sword, he's going to bring out the Lothric Knight Shield and have very good uh, guard absorption against your lightning damage. So we don't see a lot of lightning builds. I'm pretty sure dark builds get better scaling anyways. So you mostly see dark builds. And when it comes to physical builds, it's the same way. If you've got a dark build, you're automatically scaling your faith. That gives you access to Tears of Denial in an efficient way, right? It also, by the way, gives you access to Great Magic Barrier. So if you're having a set duel against a mage, you can bring Great Magic Barrier rather than Tears. Uh, I think that is everything I can think of at the moment. If you guys have more tips that you want to share, please leave them in the comment section. And I hope this whole video has been useful for you guys. Uh, you know, I want to see the community grow. I want to see you guys having fun out there in the PvP arena and having invasions and keeping the game alive as we wait for the next From Software game. Alright, well thank you very much guys, and I'll see you next time.